Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So we're on the plant deck today and we're going to talk about sun tolerance of bromeliads. So you know what? The sun is shining. The island breeze is blowing. I think it's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun and talk about bromeliads today. So today we're going to be talking about sun tolerance in bromeliads and maybe dispel a couple of myths about how you can just tell by looking at the architecture of the plant and find out whether or not it's going to be sun hardy. So all bromeliads, whether they are sun tolerant or not, really prefer to be grown in bright indirect light or filtered light. For instance, underneath of trees, that's dappled light. Now, not all bromeliads will tolerate full sun, especially where I am here in southwest Florida. We are only about 200 air miles or so away from the Tropic of Cancer, and that's where the sun is overhead on the first day of summer. So here in southwest Florida, you have to be kind of careful about where you sight your bromeliad. So is there any way to tell just by looking at a bromeliad whether or not it is going to be tolerant of full sun? And in short, no, there isn't. There are exceptions to every rule, and that's true with plants, and I'll show you why. So one of the things that is said that if the bromeliad does not have arming on the leaf, that is spines, that it will not be tolerant of full sun conditions. And conditionally, that's true. Now I'm holding right now a Vresia, that's the genus that this is in. I'm going to get it as close to the camera as I can and you can see that the leaves have absolutely no spines. These are very very friendly plants. And there are a lot of Vresias that will not tolerate unfiltered sun. So there are exceptions to almost every rule when we have them about plants, and I'm going to show you one. Now the Vresia, as I just said, some of them will not tolerate full sun, and no, they don't have any spines on the edges of the leaf. But here is a plant called an Alcantaria odorata. This is a sub-adult. They get much larger than this. And I'm going to put it up in front of the camera, and as you can see, the leaves have absolutely no spines. Now this odorata is probably one of the most sun-tolerant bromeliads that you could ever ask for. It will handle it down here in southwest Florida all day long and not even sneeze. How come? Well, if you take a look at the color on this plant, you can see that it is silver. Now the silver is not a structural color. It's a tomentum and I, maybe you can see, and you can actually rub that tomentum off of there. So the plant probably produces that tomentum in response to stress, in this case, full sun. So lack of arming and sun tolerance, not a hard and true fact. I've got two plants here, no arming on either one of the leaves. This one probably would get fried. This one wouldn't even sneeze. So here's a close-up and you can see that the odorata has very smooth leaf edges. There's no arming on there at all. And you can get an idea for the color, I hope, and see that beautiful silver color that it has. And that does impart some degree of sun tolerance in this plant. So there's another rule. Plants that have lax leaves, ones that are not stiff, probably are not going to be hardy in sun. And again, this Vresia, that's true. And here we have a neo regilia called tiger. I think it's called Scotax tiger now. Um, as you can see, the leaves are pretty, pretty stiff. They don't want to bend at all. Let me see if I can get this in frame. You can see that I, I can't bend this without tearing it. And it's got some beautiful color to it too. So this near Regilia, as you can see, I'm going to try and get real close. You can see that there is arming on those leaves, pretty spiny. And let me see if I can keep the camera from jerking around a whole lot. I'm going to show you that 
you can see this is a pretty stiff leaf. I'm afraid that if I bent it any more than this, it would have a tendency to break. Okay, so this Neoregilia here uh, is very hardy in sun. So you can see that this plant does follow that rule. If it has stiff leaves and arming, it will take the sun. But remember, there are always exceptions to every rule, and I'm going to show you one. And just like all rules, this has got exceptions. We're going to come back to the odorata, that Alcantaria that I showed you, and just take a look at the leaves. Look, they are not stiff. They are very, very flexible and lax. And this plant, again, is very, very hardy in sun. So I'm going to show you another one. This is a Neoregilia called McWilliamsii. And you can see, again, this is one of those plants that doesn't have arming, but take a look at the leaves and you can see that they can be bent easily, unlike the Neoregilia tiger. So there are no hard and fast rules. And the only way that you can tell if your bromeliad is going to be sun tolerant is to try it. Now, don't treat it like a garden ornament and put it down and come back to it in four or five days. Go out, take a look at it, maybe one or two times during the day, certainly every day during the course of the week, and see whether or not there is any bleaching on the leaves. That's the first thing that will happen. And if it's really, really severe, you need to get it out of the sun because if you don't that bleaching will result in dead areas necrotic areas on the leaf and I'm going to show you what that looks like in just a sec so I'm going to show you what sun damage looks like on a bromeliad I have two bromeliads both of them are Bilbergia pyramidalis I'll bet you you can see just by looking at this that one is yellow and the other one is green. I'm going to do a close-up and I'm going to show you what sun damage really looks like. So this is a close-up of the Bilbergia pyramidalis. This was grown under 50% shade cloth. It looks pretty healthy. I mean a couple spots on it but that's to be expected. Now this is a Bilbergia pyramidalis and as you can see, this is not a happy camper. You can see bleaching in the leaves. You can also see necrotic areas that are in the leaf. Look at that. Now this plant was tested intentionally to see whether or not pyramidalis was going to be hardy in sun. It doesn't look like it's really tolerant, does it? So let's take a close up of some of the leaves. So you can get a really good idea as to the amount of bleaching on here. You can see there's still some green on the leaves, but you can see there's quite a lot of damage. And the damage does get pretty bad in some places where you will get necrotic areas in the leaf just like this. Now that is never going to change. That is a dead area in the leaf, and that's because of the sun damage. So you can see, even though the damage is pretty extensive on this plant, we have necrotic areas and bleaching. Take a look. There is still some chlorophyll left in this plant. And that means that this plant will still be manufacturing carbohydrate using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide, and still has energy left in the meristem of the plant. So if you have a plant that gets damaged by sun, don't throw it away. It will be able to either replace the lost leaves if it's young enough. In this case, probably not. But it will also put out offsets. It will make new plants. It will make pups. So it may not be what you want to see in your landscape, but by all means, move it if it's not aesthetically pleasing and let it give you some pups. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about sun hardiness in bromeliads. Remember, just watch your plant. You can forestall damage that way. If it's getting too much sun, it will let you know and just move it back into filtered light and it'll do just fine. So no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. You need to get growing and have some fun and we'll see you next time. Thanks for stopping by.